passion that was heard around the world belonged to Mary's father. A man today honored in this year's Men of the Year Awards, and no better man, Gordon Wilson. Can you refresh all our memories? Can you, can you remember what your words were after the bombing? I know, I know you remember clearly, but I think we could all take them on board again. Well, no, it's not an easy question. And um, I don't want to cry again on television, and I don't want to be flippant either. No, of course not. I'm also aware that uh, my friends at home will be looking in, both of them. And so I've got to be careful what I say. Uh, <clears throat> you ask about words. Yeah. I've said it a thousand times. Mary's last words were words of love. And that helped. And then I was asked a, quite a simple question. How do you feel about the folk who planted the bomb? And um, I said what I said. I bear them no ill will. I bear them no grudge. I shall pray for those fellows tonight. And I still feel that way. Uh, you also said that, that you, you couldn't forgive because the forgiveness was not within your power. Well, I don't want to preach, Terry, uh, but um, that is right. Only God can forgive, and on his terms. I think it was your forgiveness and your forbearance and your compassion that really struck home with everybody because the Northern Ireland situation has been characterized by so much prejudice and hatred that it was so refreshing for everybody to hear somebody who had suffered come out with, with, a, with a kind of balance. You know, I know you're far too modest a man, you see. When I say these things to you, I can see you bridling a bit. You're going back there because... Do you find when people say this kind of thing, you think, well, it's not me. They must be talking about somebody else. Well, of course, um, this is one of the pieces that a lot of us, and um, I certainly have had to pick up, is the for want of a better word, the media attention. It's, it's a whole new ball game as far as I'm concerned, and it doesn't get any easier. But we like to think that come Monday next, you fellas will go away. Yeah, of course, yes, I mean, that, that is the nature, that <clears throat> people will stop pestering. You found it a bit of a strain, because as you say, you reacted honestly almost immediately when people asked you. Um, could you have done without the media attention? Would you have been happier yes. just to be left alone? Yes, no doubt about that. And that, that applies not just to me, but to the folk in Enniskillen. How have the folk in Enniskillen been in the, in the intervening year? How can I answer that sensibly? Um, each one has had his own or her own reaction. And I don't pretend to know an awful lot about grief, but I know enough to know that there's no sort of... Um, common answer to everybody's grief. I think everybody as an individual has to pick up their own pieces. Your, your words that you expressed afterwards, would they reflect the feelings of most of the people in Enniskillen? Not necessarily. Um, a lot of the media folk talked about me as being a spokesman for Enniskillen. I never was anything of the kind. Um, I could only speak for myself. Some people uh, perhaps would, um, and I quite understand them, would take uh, perhaps a harder line on the thing than I would. Some people were hurt more. There were ten people killed. Oh, your, daughter was, your daughter was, was the eleventh and the youngest. <clears throat> I sometimes wonder if people understand the enormity of the bomb in its killing. We're a little town of 15,000 people. And if you relate that to the size of the city of London, you're talking about a bomb in London which kills five to 6,000 people and injures 30,000. That's the size of the bomb, and that's the size of the grief. Somebody said last week that um, the grief is not just those who died. It's those who live on and have to live with it. So... Was the incident, do you think, in any kind or any way, looking at it in the most optimistic way, was it a turning point? Well, I've said this before. 
If you're talking about a turning point in terms of bombs and bullets, then obviously it was not. But if you're talking about a turning point in a lot of people's minds and hearts, then I would say it was. See, I suppose most people watching, and most of the British that I talk to about Northern Ireland are bemused. And they see a lot of dissension which is apparently based on religious beliefs. And then we hear somebody like you, who is obviously a religious man, a Christian, expressing the proper Christian attitude. Um, and then the question arises, there is a great deal of religion in, uh, in Northern Ireland and in Ireland as a whole, a great deal of religious belief. Why isn't there more of a Christian attitude? Like exemplified by you. I don't know, Jerry. I think you'd better ask somebody else that one. I think it's not for me to say. No, of course, mm. but it's just a question that people do ask. And I mean, you, you live in Northern Ireland. <clears throat> do you come across your attitude more than an attitude of bigotry? Are there more people like you than there are bigots? I don't know. I don't know. I do know that there are people with very strong views. I wouldn't ordain to call them bigots, but there are people with um, strong views. No doubt about that. But I like to think there are a lot of people with moderate views. And of course, you have to live in Northern and you have to continue right. to live in Enniskillen. Right. And given that there are still bigots and strange people around, you have to be careful what you say, too. Um, why do you think... Did you feel at any stage, I'd like to leave Enniskill and I'd like to go away and make a new life somewhere else? Yes. Yes. At least twice since the bomb, as we call it. My wife and I have sat down and not so much decided to leave the north of Ireland. The question was, where would we go? But in the cold light of dawn, we said, we'll stay. Our roots are there. Our friends are there. And that's the attitude of most people who live there, isn't it? I think so. There is, a, a little, I think, perhaps a little more um, movement of people out of Northern Ireland than before. Mm. But. Um, we get on with it. It's a day-to-day -day thing. Has time been a healer for you? Has the 12 months, in any mm. sense, staunched the wound? My grief is still very near the surface. And this is true of others as well, of course. People keep telling me time is a healer. It's a healer to the point or to the degree that I think it teaches us and we learn to to cope with things a little better. I must congratulate you, and I'm sure it'll be in the papers tomorrow, but being made one of the men of the year. And also, at the beginning of the year, of course, you were Radio 4's man of the year. You beat, you beat everybody for that, <laughs> didn't you? Which just shows you what people think of you, whether in, whether in a sense you like all the attention or not. Um, people do think very, very highly of you. Well, we didn't, uh, I didn't say what I said uh, for a response, but we've used the word people quite a few times since we started to chat, and uh, people, I must say, have been great. People have been marvelous. Uh, the response was enormous by, by my standards, at any rate. Uh, and sometimes very moving. I think perhaps if I might tell you about one <clears throat> which moved me most of all, was a letter, and it wasn't in fact a letter at all. It was postmarked in London. This was within a week of the bomb. It was what was on the envelope that certainly touched me. And it had two words, and it said, Mary's dad. I found that very moving, and it got to me. Oh, it got to you. Yeah. Yeah. Will you be at the Cenotaph on Sunday? I shall, with my wife and family. Indeed. Well, I'm very glad that you've joined us here, because I know from talking to you, you're not a man who courts publicity or even enjoys it very much, but thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Gordon Wilson. Thank you.